So in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about this new controller that I'm building which I'm planning to replace my old controller which is this one here. This controller works pretty well but I'm using the older version of the RepRap firmware on the Duet 2 Wi-Fi controller. This one's going to use the latest version of the firmware which is substantially different and it actually works out a lot easier to build one from scratch than to try and update the one that I've already got. I'm also using better components as well as the Duex 5 expansion board. I'm mainly using this so that I don't have to use individual DuPont connectors on the expansion header which is normally underneath this ribbon cable. You can see here they're just push fitted in and I was always a little bit worried that something would just get pulled out and I wouldn't know what it was. Along with the normal axes I'm also going to connect this thing here which hopefully will act as a tangential knife head with its own stepper motor and proximity sensor to set a particular position. I'm still not 100% sure how that will work but it's something I'd like to play around with. The other thing I'm going to do on this controller is install the Oplaser PLH3D CNC adapter so I can use this as a dual CNC router and laser engraving machine plus the tangential knife head. It's a little bit ambitious but that's the plan. Another difference with the old controller is I'm using some of the heat pins to control and power an LED light strip and I've also written some conditional g-code which will operate the lights depending on the status and activity of the controller which is something I couldn't do with the older version of the firmware. On this side here will go the wires to the stepper motors. Here is the barrier block for the LED strip. I'll use this to connect any push buttons that are used as external triggers. This barrier block over here will connect to the proximity sensors for the different axes and if I remember correctly I sh still need to add an additional barrier block for the touch probe. The reason I'm using the barrier blocks is because I plan to use gaskets connectors on the enclosure where the wires will go directly through and then with crimp terminals be screwed onto the ends and if I need to disconnect them instead of using a aviation panel mount style male and female connector I'll do it from within the enclosure. It should be a little bit easier to set up, less fiddly soldering to do. Over here I've got some 24 volt relay modules which are opto isolated and I'm using to step the voltage down between the controllers and the external signals. So for example the proximity sensors which can use up to 36 volts will send their signal to the input point on the relay module and then the lower voltage which is either 3.3 or 5 volts will disconnect or connect depending on how the firmware has been set up and I'm planning to do the same with the external buttons. I probably could have got away with going directly to the terminals on the on the individual push switches but I thought I'd maintain the same method throughout uh, to try and limit interference affecting the signals. Another change is I'm using a good quality power supply by Meanwell and I've swapped over to the RS510 VFD from RS Tools. This is going to be a little bit interesting to work with because I think even though the manual is more clear, surprisingly there may be less features on this than the NFLIX in one that I was using previously and which I'd bought from China. On this controller I've got a latching switch which toggles a setting on the VFD and allows me to go from the voltage going into the VFD to set the speed from the controller to using a potentiometer and this is a really nice feature to have while you're cutting because if you've made a slight mistake with the speeds on certain materials you can adjust them manually. You can also use it to help you do tests when working with new cutting tools and materials. I'm not 100% sure whether that's possible to do with this variable frequency drive here. So I'm waiting for a smaller power supply to come which I'll connect over here and that power supply will be dedicated to the op laser and it is advised to use separate power supplies for your controller and whatever drives the stepper motors from what is driving the laser. Along with all that 
I've got my barrier blocks here which separate the 24 volt power to different areas and is an easy place to locate and disconnect stuff. Down here I've got two sets of analog in to PWM converters which will eventually go to the controller and operate it. Although again I'm not entirely sure how it works with this particular VFD whether I need a separate signal to turn the spindle on and then another variable voltage signal to set the speed. Um, I suspect I'll need two so I've left two down here. If that's not the case then I'll take one away. And I've got a couple LED lights here which actually are not going to be used as LED lights so I was just checking that the signal worked when I was playing around with the config file and firmware but these will go into the input terminals of this two pair 24 volt relay module and the relay module will be connected to the power on some sockets which I can control which I'll later connect either to a dust extractor or a fume extractor or some disco lights. So this video doesn't turn into one where I talk about stuff I either did or I'm planning to do. I'll show you how I mounted the two channel relay module and crimp some terminals. After marking through the openings of the relay module with a long reach pen and pushing a point onto the metal backing plate, I drilled some 3.2mm openings with a stubby cobalt drill bit and my sexy new 12 volt 4 speed fine drill. I deburred the back and then grabbed some 3mm hex standoffs and loosely fitted them in place with the male end facing upwards. I put the relay module onto those threads and then tightened the fixing screws from underneath. I also took the module off and used a nut spinner to tighten them up ever so slightly more. I gave the area a good vacuum and secured the relay module down with some female to female hex standoffs. To connect the power to the relay module I offered up the wires and cut them a little longer than I needed. I then stripped about 9mm off from one end of both wires twisted the core and crimped the boot ferrules in place. I'm just going to cut a couple mil off the end of these. I cut about 3 to 4 millimeters off the sheathing on the opposite ends of the wires and then crimped some insulation fork terminals on, essentially using the same method but with a different crimping tool. So I'm using the two outer PWM fan headers because the one in the center actually turns on momentarily as the controller gets powered and if I were to use that on a relay module whatever was connected to that would also turn on momentarily. To connect to the Duet 2 pins PWM fan headers I had to make up some wires using the 2.54mm crimp terminals and the two-way shells provided with the controller. I began by stripping 2mm off the sheathing off the end of the wire and then twisted the core. I then took the crimp terminal and placed it into the 0.25mm jaw of my SN-28B crimper. And I keep my finger on the opposite end to prevent it from dropping out. And then grab my wire, push that in a little bit until I feel the edge of the plastic sheathing hit the start of the crimp. Then I raise it and push it in a mil or two more. And then, and then with the lower part of my hand, I begin to tighten and then finish that off. And I'm careful to make sure that the tab here is not inside the jaws otherwise it will prevent it from working and you should end up with something like this i'm not sure if other people also put a bit of solder in there as well just to make sure it's never going to come out but that feels pretty good to me i can then push it into its plastic housing using the hole in the right hand side and you'll hear it click if for any reason you take it out, you just push the tab in on this side here. Okay, I've wired it up a little bit differently this time around. When I went directly from the fan terminals into the relay module, the 
signal was being pulled up so it didn't matter what I was writing in the code I couldn't seem to uh, change that. I decided to use an additional two PWM to analog converters to separate the signal essentially. So when I turn the controller on I use an M950 command to assign fan 0 and 2 to P2 and P3 and then I use an M42 command with the P number and then I turn it on or off using the S command, either one or zero. One is on, zero is off. On the config file, it specifies to turn them off and then I'll add the relevant commands in whatever start code I generate um, for CNCing so that the relays turn and then I can control a extractor or fan. So M42P, 2s1 and m42p 3s1 so m42p 2s0 turns off one relay and then p3s0 turns off the other so i still have a lot of work to do and frustratingly i am stopping to write detailed notes to produce another manual as i'm going along so the process does feel quite slow but it's a start and hopefully this series will help a lot of other people learn how to use the Duet to make quite sophisticated CNC controllers. In the next video or set of videos I will go over the CNC specific inputs for the Duet 2 Wi-Fi which include push switches for the external triggers such as an emergency stop, pause or resume, the proximity limit sensors for homing the different axes, as well as the stationary probe for zeroing the tool length, and there was something else, uh, the safety enclosure door switch. I'm still deciding on how to structure these videos and whether to address one area at a time or group issues together to create an umbrella theme. So your input and requests would be greatly appreciated. If there's any aspect of the build you want me to cover in more detail or draw my attention to, please leave a comment in the description below and I'll try and address them. And that leaves me with the final thing to say, which is thanks again for watching. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to sacrifice a thumb to the algorithm gods and you'll catch me in the next one.